Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745. Well, if you watched the last episode, we crashed out on it. We're going to try this again. We're playing the most current version of the Great War mod. Um, so I don't know why we faced that crash. Well, let's also see about um, improving some of our more our generals here. Okay, our artillery attack, defense, regrouping, division, recovery, right? Yeah. There we go. Not really worried about our air force, though we do have one. As I was actually surprised to find out. Keep naval invasion of Istanbul. Well, there... I don't think they get in the war until, at least if it's historically, I think it's um, in 1916, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Okay. Um, yeah, we're declaring war. Okay, guys. Now, a little more prepared out here. Okay, and here we're not as prepared, maybe. Um, Okay, the powder keg is bypassed, yes. Yes, I'm giving up the territory outside of my pocket there. guys go right into there and you support that attack there now yeah mentioning that let's go with let's go with war economy I think we'll do that Mm, no, nah, I don't know. Mm. Recruitable population is less. I think we'll just do war economy. I think that'll be fine. And... Okay, we don't have enough political points for more. <coughs> okay. We'll go with that. Stop popping up in front of me. Where do we still? Oh, down in Odessa. Huh. These guys really can't do much. So, never mind. These guys, I guess, could theoretically. Oh, we have a gap here. I didn't realize we had a gap. Plus 
plug the gap. Okay, yes, we really need to know that you are calling in Australia. That is vital information for me to know. Uh, Oh, come on, people. You were supposed to attack and take these guys out. Um, Okay, okay, good. We're here. Um, there we go. That's looking good. You push into there. Make them retreat. Yeah, take Konigsberg. Yes, we also need to know New Zealand was showing up into this war. This guy's a cool beard, so he'll get the command. Two of your divisions move into here. Okay, well, you know, they finally made that. And support that attack there. Support that attack. Um, yeah. Hammer right into there with their support. There we go. We got a good pocket going. Um, you guys come to there. Okay, so we've held here, good, um, push, and with one of those divisions, you can move up to the front.
they can support that attack out of Warsaw. Now, how is the Western Front doing? Yeah. Better than it did um, historically. Okay, new name for St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg, the glorious capital of Imperial Russia, has long and prestigious history. However, the Russian name of St. Petersburg was too much has too much German influence. Petrograd, conversely, has a Russian or is a Russian and is or as fish political. Hopefully, the new name will catch on. Change it to Petrograd. Usability. Okay, we'll change it to Juarez assassinated. Jean Juarez of France was assassinated in the Parisian Cafe La Croissant. I think that's where they came up with the croissant. Um, if I remember something about that. Um, and on 146 Rue Montremar, I'm butchering this French, I know, uh, most aptly named. Um, Raoul Villian, a 29-year-old French nationalist, Suarez was scheduled to appear at one of the Internationale's conferences to deliver a protest against the seemingly impending war. And the war has already happened. Um, with his death, the last major social obstacle to French involvement in the coming fight was passed. Okay, um, we talked a lot last episode about various yeah the name isn't there properly icarus um but about various you know uh, ethnic conflicts without clear delineated borders okay now there's another th another thing here um stemming out of this attack you have an assassination of what I like to think of as the vice president of Austro-Hungary equivalent, the, the crown prince. The, um, the Habsburgs had been leading a, um, a sort of tragic recent history. Maximilian Habsburg goes off to be emperor of france or, i mean not, well no emperor not of france emperor of mexico supported by um the french empire under napoleon the third um and he goes off to to lead um the, the mexican empire well he ends up being um executed by firing squad by the mexicans when he, he loses I uh, don't blame the Mexicans for doing it, but they didn't need to execute him. They could have just sent him home. I think it, the um, the tragedy of the whole Mexican situation really wasn't Maximilian's fault. It was the French's fault. He was the scapegoat. I think he truly... Good night, Tippet. Thanks for being here. Had fun playing with you. So, um, I really don't blame Maximilian for the stuff, though obviously he he bears some responsibility. So, um, he's killed. Um, then you get um, no oh, um, the Archduke Ferdinand um, von Habsburg of Habsburg um, killed assassinated by um, sort of Bosnian terrorists, but are set up by the Serbians. And that is an act of war, peoples. You kill, you know, the next in line to ruling a country. So that's why I put him similar to a vice president in that one of the major jobs of a, the American vice president is to be the next in line for the presidency. The other thing is, is he's actually the president of the Senate. You might not know that, but he is called the president um, when he is in the Senate itself because he is um, he presides over the Senate and can vote in the Senate only to break a tie 
but he can because we are, we have a system set up that there's always an even number of senators. And so if they all show up or whatever, because um, they don't all have to be showing up, but so if there is, it can result in ties, and then at that point he can vote um, to break the tie. But otherwise, he is technically just the president of the Senate, and he rarely actually is in the Senate. So he mostly just hangs around and waits to be president if something goes wrong with the president. So that's sort of what a crown prince is. So that's what I looked at. You kill the crown prince of a country, that is an act of war. The Serbs did that. Now what happens, and this is sort of, um, this has happened much, much faster than historically, um, is that there was a long delay from when the assassination happened what was it in July? It's like in September. It's like 90 plus days later does the war start. Because there's, for various reasons, there's negotiations um, going on between the, um, and I don't know what they were over, quite honestly. I know that there were negotiations going on between the Austrians and the Serbs. I don't know if it was territorial demands or demands for, you know, the people, you know, the people, not just the, because they got the guy who shot him. Um, but some of the guys behind them are, I don't know exactly what it over. But none of the demands are met, so Austria goes to war. Because of this big delay between the assassination and the war, it sort of separates it in a lot of people's minds. So it sort of seems like Austrian aggression against Serbia, which is really not the case. Like I was saying earlier in the previous episode, the Habsburg Empire the Austro-Hungarian Empire, whatever you want to call it, it has been pushing into territories that had formerly been part of the um, Ottoman Empire, most assuredly. But there was no immediate threat to the Kingdom of Serbia. Um, the Kingdom of Serbia is actually pushing to try to enlarge itself. Um, there had been from 1900 on, there had been a series of generally small and generally short wars in the Balkans, um, you know, figuring out the borders here and whatnot. So, um, Serbia is sort of playing that game and wants to do that. So, this is what really um, is going on, is the delayed effect causes the war to break out larger. And it's an important thing to remember um, about the First World War. At least I think it is. Especially, and now, I blame the Germans for enlarging the war. And that's sort of why they have the... Um, uh, war guilt put on them, in my opinion. Uh, at the end of the First World War. They definitely enlarge it by invading Belgium, who was being very neutral and staying out of it. And so, in my, in my opinion, there's no dispute over that. And so, if it wasn't for that, I think we could readily put the blame for the war on the Serbs. The Serbs definitely, in my opinion, started, but um, what do we have here? Okay, well, um, I really wish Black Ice would keep to the standard. Uh, okay, improve submarine components. Let's do decryption. Let's have fun and try to read their mail. Come on, take these guys down. Let's move the airplanes from down here, which are way too far away, up to here. Maybe that'll be close enough to... And then let's... Come on. 
come over here with ground support. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. I really do hate this airbase mechanic. We'll see about that. But see, I don't want to produce. Look, when I get done producing 30,000 rifles, as you will, and get all this stuff done, then we'll think about producing things like trucks or an aircraft and other things. Okay, well, come in here, cut these guys off. Oh, good. Um, pause you. You come into here. No, not all of you. Just you and you. You support that attack, and you support this attack. while we push deeper into Austria. Oh good, you've made it to here, so um just counter strike there. Oh come on, keep pushing, keep pushing. Ah, ability to produce more rifles. Um, yeah, let's do that. You guys having any good effect on these guys? Oh, well, we're against Ludendorff. He was the one commanding out here at the time. Our divisions aren't doing so well. Gonna jump, get in there. Okay, well. Yeah, you're right about that. The Madsen is um, awfully modern for Russia. Um, if I drop down to a lesser quality, it actually disrupt my production, I think. So, yeah, it is a bit overdone. Um, let's also produce some artillery. 
Opening of the Panama Canal after years of construction, the Panama Canal opened today, establishing a more direct connection between the Atlantic and the Pacific, which will no doubt be a boon to trade in the region as well as make the area an important strategic location. American engineers have stunned the world with this amazing feat, with the ex exception, of, of course, of the British and the Germans, who both insist that their canals are better. <laughs> Well, the Kiel Canal, hmm, um, that, that ain't much of a feat, quite honestly. And the Suez, well, that's all on flat land. What really makes the Panama Canal is that they actually fill up an artificial lake in there and with the big lock system, that's what makes it so much more than the rest. And it was really, really harsh territory to, to build in. Yeah, um, I do know that some Russian troops, I do believe, are were issued with pikes because that's sort of what they had. Um, now, I don't know how many of those troops were actually sort of anywhere near the front line, you know, like fighting Austrians or Germans versus, sorry, I'm putting on a sweater here from bumping things around, um, you know, versus just sort of inter internal garrisons. Um, yeah, I don't know how much we want to move troops up from the interior more. Um, you know, reserve type units definitely doing that. Basically, I don't know if any of you, there's a really good series, the um, sort of Great War day by day or whatever, week, week by week, I guess it is. I've watched a few episodes of that, but what I really watch is See an Arsenal. It's this link on the page on, you, on my YouTube channel to it. Um, it's a really good, um, channel dealing with the history of the weapons used during World War One, And I guess we'll move these guys up. Give them to him, even though he's not commanding in the area. Okay, we will come here and deal with this. Um, they just end up, everybody, not just the Russians, but everybody, just buying about every weapon they can lay their hands on. There's a huge economic boom in America at this time, uh, selling weapons to the Europeans. Um, no, the Suez is done by the British. Um, there is a the there's a Frenchman who buys the concession. Oh, we want to build more arms factories, but the French sort of um, fail at doing it, and so they come in. Forget the guy's name. Um, and they come in and take over the whole thing. So yeah, um, French guy sort of gets it going, but it's um, really much more of a, an actual British production. That's why the British end up in charge in, in, in um, Egypt. Why aren't you guys attacking? You're supposed to be attacking. Didn't anybody tell you that? Support that attack. That looks like it'll be more useful.
Oh, we've actually been pushed back here. Okay, well, that is not the preferred outcome. We were supposed to push these guys back. Man, this is looking too historical. Okay. Get up on trains, come into here. We're going to come into there. Well, of course, this isn't looking historical. I don't think the Germans tried their Schlieffen plan very well. Okay, so we have some improved tools, improved artillery, but um, I'm not going to build max speed would be nice improvement. Let's look over here at production capabilities. Hmm. Mobile defense or static defense. Why is mm, I don't know if I like this. Don't know why rifle and machine gun here are exclusive. I don't know why machine gun is giving. Well, we want soft attack. Because we're fighting the Germans and we mostly f say, face, at least if it's historical, um, infantry type units. Missing equipment production. What am I missing? Close air support. Yeah, I know I'm not building any. Um, no, I want the disband the air wing. Okay, you guys go into the other fighters. Oh good, we've got this pocket closed. 
you, you, you go that way. See these guys there? They're about collapsed, so attack them now. Hey, okay, now that they've gotten more reinforcements, counterattack. their attack but don't move out of position okay Okay, well, oh, they've broken open again. You attack up there. You support that attack, and you can. Come on, push. Push, push, push. Into the meat grinders of the war. Into the meat grinders. Oh, sorry, I didn't see. Um. Yeah, but the static, I get the static, but it was hard attack and the bonuses, and I didn't like that. I don't know why going into the Netherlands helps you... <laughs> I get what you're saying there, and I'm not saying you're wrong, Arno, because you probably know better than I do. But I don't, I don't get why going into the Netherlands helps you out, because if you can't get through here, you know what? Just adding more problems, and that I think that I, I think not going into the Netherlands helps Germany immensely in World War One. Um. At least that's my interpretation of it. But, you know, I could be wrong, of course, because I'm sometimes am, but. Mm, let's come down here. We could use more forces in here. Go back into Konigsberg. Support that attack. And support this attack, I guess. Okay, let's see what we might add here. Um, well, we have enough men, so I don't know if we need to do that more. Um, Now, 
let's look back. Something that reduces production time, not research time. Oh well. Um, yeah, I, I get I, I get that idea of trying to, you know, go around them. I mean but then again how I don't know how the Belgian army, uh, the Nether the Dutch army would have fought at that point. The Belgian army fought be much better in World War One than they did in World War Two. Um, so I don't know how good they would have fought. Yeah, I get the point of trying to go around it, but just adding more enemies is just not necessarily the way to to do stuff. Oh, good, you're we're here. Okay, um, you guys push into there. Let's give them a couple of divisions supporting so they're not attacking in one place. Um, let's reduce this down. Well, yeah. Attack there with these guys supporting it and they can support that well it looks like we're going to take out this pocket at least it sort of kind of looks like we'll hold down here um I guess they'll come up and we'll send one down here to match that. Um, oh, we were pushed back here. How interesting. Okay. Um, send one division to hold there. Um, let's push where they ain't. I mean, because there's nine here, nine up there. They'll support that, though, just to give them a little more. Support. Okay, um, yeah, I get the size of the army, but that doesn't mean how well they fight. Yeah, and that's the Dutch army, um, but the Dutch army, a lot of it is down here. Um, don't know in 1914 per se, but I do know... Oh, let's pause it while we're looking somewhere else. You know, a lot of their army was doing colonial stuff as well. So, yeah. I guess... I don't know. I just don't think that should be desperation. Obviously, they, they push through it, but... Industrial effort, very good. Now we can do construction, dockyard expansion, shipyards, armaments, military, civil, air base. We want to do civil first, I think. And hopefully we're still using our civil to properly make, not repair things. I want to make more equipment. Okay, cool, thanks. 
so that wasn't it was the European okay cool I understand makes sense um, you come over here yeah I know I'm playing it on speed too but I liked oh shoot we've lost Warsaw when did that happen We should not have done that. And that's sort of why I'm playing on the speed. So I can hopefully micromanage it well enough. Oh, come on, people. Do something out here. Don't just sit there. It's fighting them alone. The Austrians and the Germans. You're just sitting on the border. Okay. Um, attack. 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 Oh, actually, let's send one of the horsey units up this way. Attack. Oh, you need to go in and occupy the province, and you need to get there before the Austrians do. See, the Germans sent down. Oh, damn. Sent down some reinforcements. Okay, good. We've taken that. You guys come this way. Well, we're going to end this episode. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the video. Oh, got to pause it. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. You can even follow me over on Twitch. Um, and, of course, I really love hearing from you. So if you want to post questions, comments, suggestions, uh, please post them. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.